sorry for, for that. So uh, how to do it in OpenStack using Clockity, Sailometer, and Gnocchi? So first of all, uh, I think it's a good place to start doing a review of the definition of billing, of uh, a telcos definition of uh, a billing system. So as you can see, we have three well-defined processes here that take place in a billing uh, system. We have the methoding process, that is the process to get all the information from your cloud, the information that you want to build. And as a result of that collection, you will get a collection of samples that you will uh, store to be used later in the way you want. Then we have the rating process, that is the process to analyze that collection of samples in base of a uh, business rule that can be set, for example, for the marketing department of your company. And in base of uh, that uh, an analysis, you will get, uh, you will create bill line items that you will store to be uh, uh, used later also. And finally, we have the billing process, that is the, uh, it's the process to assemble that bill line items into a per customer bill or, or a several per customer's bill to start the payment collection. So today we will go through all these uh, processes and we'll, we will connect these processes with the corresponding uh, OpenStack service. For example, I will start uh, talking about methering with Silometer and Gnocchi. Then uh, Stephen will talk about uh, rating with Clockity. And finally, I will show you a brief demo about how is uh, how you can do bidding reports and how to uh, show graphics uh, in base of that metrics in an OpenStack dashboard. So, as you already know, Silometer is the, pro the service to do methering in OpenStack. Uh, it was launched in 2012 uh, to provide the architecture to collect all the metrics from your cloud, from different services across your cloud, then store that metrics and then expose that matrix via an HTTP API to be consumed. But after the Kilo version, uh, the telemetry team introduced several changes into this project, uh, mainly to uh, resolve uh, several kind of performance issues that uh, were reported. So they introduced Gnocchi as a completely different project to store all the metrics collected for, uh, from the cloud in a new format. They also add a new uh, dispatcher, uh, Gnocchi dispatcher, that is used by the Sinometer collector now to uh, collect the metrics and store the metrics into the new service, into Gnocchi. They introduce also another completely different service that is called AODH, that is for uh, manage all the alarms and, and the notifications uh, by, the, by the result of consuming the metrics, analyze the metrics from uh, Gnocchi in the cloud. And finally, Sailometer that uh, in this new architecture just uh, manage the events uh, that comes from our cloud. So how's, how's the architecture of this new telemetry system after Kilo? As you can see, you have all the uh, uh, Sailometer agents structure that keep, keeps the same structure that the, in the older, older versions. You have the compute, the agent computes that get information from your instances uh, through the hypervisor. Then the um, Asian notifications for, uh, for the events from your APIs, uh, Asian Central that get information about the hardware using S, uh, SNMP and EPMI protocols. And all the Asians uh, that collect that information from your, from your cloud send that information through the OpenStack notification bus. Then you have the Silometer collector that collect that information from the OpenStack noti notification bus and now split that information in two. First, store the events in their own database, and then push the metrics using the uh, Gnocchi dispatcher to the new uh, Gnocchi service. Then Gnocchi process that metrics and store that metrics in their own backend, and then the all, the another service, that is AODH, consume the metrics from Gnocchi now, analyze that matrix and uh, manage the creation of alarms and notification and store that data in their own database. So in this architecture is uh, more uh, modular. Each one of the modules has their own database, has their own storage backend, and also um, has uh, as an, a specific role in this, uh, in this architecture and store a specific kind of data. So what's Gnocchi and why is, uh, is so important in this new architecture? Gnocchi is a multi-tenant time series metrics and resource database for OpenStack. Uh, 
the main change uh, thing is uh, here. It's that uh, NeoKey now stores the metric in a new format, in a, in, a, in a time series format, and in an aggregated manner. So this, enabled to, uh, this enables NeoKey to uh, store big quantities of data, uh, being easily scalable, and also without, without losing the performance. And that's the most important part, without losing the performance. So to do this, Nyoki used two different backends for storing the data. First of all, uh, Nyoki has an indexer to index the resources uh, to, to then match the metrics and use um, a MySQL uh, backend to do this. And then have another driver, that is the storage driver, uh, that had the role to uh, push, uh, to uh, store the final metrics into a, uh, usually a distributed storage. So uh, for this purpose, Nyoki use uh, storage like Swift or Ceph that are distributed storage that are easily scalable and um, can, can uh, store big amount of big quantities of data. Also, Nyoki has, uh, as the other uh, OpenStack services, their own IPA. It's, it's a stateless process, so, so if you have more metrics coming on, you can spawn more, more processes and also the uh, asynchronous processing uh, that it's also stateless, so if you want, you can add more process to, to uh, process more data in parallel. So host the new architecture with Gnocchi uh, and Scalometer. As I, as I have said, you have the Scalometer agents uh, in every part of, uh, of your cloud. Uh, this is the architecture that we build in New Value. So uh, the agents are getting information for, from computes, from uh, the APIs, uh, from the hardware and push it then information into the into the notification bus, OpenStack notification bus with the old OSLO libraries. For that purpose, we use a RabbitMQ cluster. Then we have a pool of Scalometer collectors. <coughs> sorry. There are a pool of pro of process that get and consume that messages for from RabbitMQ in parallel, and then have the uh, new Noki dispatcher configure to push the metrics into the Gnocchi API. And in the, um, as the Gnocchi API, we have a pool of Gnocchi API processes under a load balancer that consume that metrics in parallel, then index the resources into a SQL backend. In this case, we are using a MariaDB Galera Active Active Cluster. And finally, push the raw metrics into a, our self uh, distributed cluster. So as the first time that uh, the Gnocchi API pushed the metric into the, into the self cluster, the, that, uh, the format of, of that data is, is, is a raw format. We have to aggregate that data regarding some rules that we uh, created in our Gnocchi uh, API. So for that reason, we have a pool of Gnocchi metric D processes that gate the data, the raw data from the uh, self cluster, aggregate that data regarding our policies, and then push the data again. Okay, and, and that uh, pool of uh, Nyoki processes are uh, coordinated by a Redis cluster. So how we do this? Um, the integration with Scalometer and Nyoki is quite simple. You have to add just a new dispatcher, that is uh, the Nyoki dispatcher, into the default section of your Nyoki configuration file. Then you have to add a new section, that is the dispatcher Nyoki. Uh, you have to add some, some flags. Uh, that are optional, but the really important flag here is the URL. You have to put there the URL of your Gnocchi API. In this case, we are, we are using a load balancer, so you will put the API of the load balancer. And then we have the also messaging Rabbit in which we put all the uh, addresses of our Rabbit, cl Rabbit cluster and the keys to note token and the service credential like in, in another OpenStack services that are obviously connected with Keystone. Now, Ceph integration. Uh, as I said, we are using uh, Ceph uh, as our uh, preferred storage. We have been testing uh, all the um, backends, storage backends that Gnocchi provides. Ceph it's the one that gave us the better results, and we have been working with uh, the telemetry team to improve the performance with this, this uh, type of backend. So uh, how to integrate it with uh, Gnocchi? It's Quite simple also, you have to add in the storage section the driver, the Ceph driver. Then you have to add all the information about the pool. You have to create a new pool uh, to, to use uh, in Gnocchi. 
So it's uh, gnocchi underscore free, it's the name of the pool in Ceph. You had to put the name of the pool, uh, the username, and all the Ceph query and config file. Are all, all of them are credentials that you have to use when you connect something uh, with uh, Ceph. It's like when you use uh, Cinder and Ceph with multiple backends, the same configuration. And if you will use, um, if you will be using multiple metric Ds to, to process information in parallel, you have to add the coordination URL that is based on Redis. Okay, so once the metrics, uh, we, we have to uh, create different policies to aggregate the data, as, as I say in the previous slide. So uh, first of all, you have to create that policies in Gnocchi. Uh, um, before start the metric uh, collection and the metric pushing. So uh, we have here uh, the archive policy. You can define several like, archive policies. The archive policies are composed by different parameters. In this case, we have the time span. That is the period of time that you will uh, store, that you will store your metric. And then you have the granularity. That is the interval between the samples that you will store in that metric. So it's like the resolution of the metric. So in, in the first uh, example, you have a time sum of seven days. So, so you will keep that metric for seven days, and you will be pushing uh, a sample every 20 minutes. Okay. So you will get 100, uh, sorry, 500, uh, 504 points. And then you have to add also the aggregation method, like summarize, average, minimum, maximum, etc. Those are the aggregation method methods that you will use when you use the metric. Then you have to create the ar an archive policy rule because you want to match every metric and put every met metric with an archive policy. So you have to create the archive policy rule uh, that uh, works with a metric pattern that it's a regular expression that will match the name of the metric and will put the metric into an archive policy. Um, then, then you have to uh, create the resources. The resources are the resources that you get from your cloud. Uh, for example, instances, volumes, uh, hypervisors, images. You can add metadata to that resources. In, in case of an instance, for example, you can add the project ID, the project name, user ID, etc. The metadata that you want. And then you have the metrics that Synometer provides for uh, each one of these resources. In case of an instance, you have the CPU delta, CPU utilization, instance uptime, and a lot of more uh, metrics. So once you configure your, your uh, cell iteration to push the metrics into Gnocchi, Gnocchi will match that metrics in your resources, and then the, the arcade policy rule will match the name of the metrics and will aggregate that data in base of the archive policy that you have in set. Okay? And as a result of this matching, you will get the measures that are the samples that you want, time sum, granularity, and values. And that's the measure that you will be able to see when you do a query. So some improvements in the latest versions. So the addition of the uh, new resource API to create a resource. So before this, um, this feature, uh, Nuki creates automatically all the resources in a fixed manner, so you couldn't change that. Right now, you can create your own resources, and the second point, uh, you can create the metadata for that resources. You can set metadata for that resources, and you can use then that metadata to do aggrupations, and that's the first point. So you can do. Uh, native group by. For example, if you will get the instance uptimes, uh, in, uh, you have to ask instance uptimes to Gnocchi. Gnocchi will give you all the instance uptime from all your instances in the cloud. But you will, uh, you will, uh, you want to, that re result uh, will be aggregated, for example, by, uh, uh, by tenant, by project ID, then by flavor ID and then by instance ID. So you, you can do that kind of queries. And then you can filter also by metadata. You can just uh, get the metadata for a specific tenant or for a specific uh, flavor. Okay. 
And the last thing is several performance and stability improvements. We have been working uh, really hard with the telemetry team, uh, providing feedback and trying to solve uh, some uh, performance issues that we had in, at the beginning. And we uh, get a really good performance, uh, for example, using Ceph. So this is an example. Uh, CRADOX is a, a different library that the telemetry team uh, created to use Ceph with Gnocchi to, to get a faster access uh, from the metric D and from the Gnocchi API to our Ceph cluster. So now Stephen will talk about Clock Kitty, and then uh, I will show you a demo. Thanks, Max. OK, so you've got your data stored. That's good. But you want to do billing, so you need to apply some calculation on your data. So that, that's where Cloud Kitty uh, comes. Um, the goal is of Cloud Kitty is to uh, connect to all your components in OpenStack that are gathering metrics. So uh, it's uh, decomposed in a few parts. That's a red part on the, on the schema. Um, so basically, first step is to collect the data. Uh, we have um, drivers in Cloud Kitty to collect data from the Silometer API or Gnocchi API. So you can have both acti activated at the same time or only use one. Um, every red part is a driver, a steep door driver. So if you want to create your own driver because you have some data in a in database, for example, some custom customers' uh, data, uh, you can collect the data too and push it in the reaching pipeline to do specific calculation based on um, business data, for example. When you've got your data, uh, you need to apply calculation on it. So it's the rating part, the part in the middle. Um, as I said before, uh, uh, simple plugins, you can have as many plugins as you want. And the calculation is done on every plugin. So uh, we have a few plugins in Cloud Kitty. Uh, some plugins to create your rating rules directly in Python. So you can create Python script that will um, work on the data and do calculation. Or we have a hash map, uh, as we call it, uh, rating module, which is a way to model your rating rules uh, with some objects. So you don't have to create some uh, specific um, equation to do your calculation. You only create ob uh, objects and map uh, based on the different objects and do your calculation this way. Uh, every configuration of Cloud Kitty is stored in the database. You have your basic configuration, which is in configuration file, like uh, Keystone uh, auth tokens and all the Keystone integration and the basic integration of every uh, collectors, because you need to connect to Keystone. But uh, when you're set, uh, you can use the same configuration file for all your processes, and then you um, configure Cloud Kitty directly from the API. Uh, the goal is to be able to scale, uh, scale up and scale, and scale down easily and configure it directly from the API so you can give the right to some people to modify the configuration without the need to access to the servers. Uh, we have some integration in Horizon, so you can directly modify the configuration and the rating rules in Horizon. And it's, um, it's better for security because you're not uh, allowing some salespeople, for example, our marketing people, when they want to create rating rules to access the servers and modify uh, configuration files that might look a little bit shady to them. And when you're done, um, we store the data. So we have um, a native storage backend. That was the first backend that we created. So we store it in a SQL Alchemy. Uh, it's a SQL Alchemy backend. So basically, it will be Postgres or, or MySQL. Uh, and we can store the data this way. Or, uh, or you can use, uh, since the Mitaka release, uh, a Gnocchi backend. So basically, you, st uh, you get a reference to your Gnocchi <coughs> information, and you only store the, the rate, so the final, final calculation. This way, you benefit for all the performances from, from Gnocchi, and you don't duplicate the data. Again, you can create your own uh, storage uh, driver if you want to. And there is a common API on top of storage. So if you're using uh, Gnocchi or on nat our native storage, there is only one common API, and you don't need to care about what's behind. About the state of the Mitaka release, so it's our first uh, release with, the open, uh, with OpenStack. Um, <clears throat> and what we worked with uh, in Mitaka is the integration with Gnocchi. So we, we created the first iteration of the Gnocchi driver. Um, 
basically, we can collect data from Gnocchi. So all the data that is in Gnocchi, we can collect it in, in uh, CloudKitty, so you can do calculation on it. Uh, and we support uh, an hybrid storage in Gnocchi. Uh, so we don't store all the data in Gnocchi because some features were not there at the time of the Mitaka release, for example, the dynamic resources. So if you collect data outside of Gnocchi, you need to create resources, and we, were, we weren't able to do it at the time. That's why we didn't integrate it fully with Gnocchi. Basically, uh, you keep a reference to the Gnocchi metrics and resources, and you only store the fi final calculation. So it's only aligned with the final calculation, and all the metadata and metrics are still in Gnocchi, so you can still leverage the scaling capabilities of Gnocchi. And we improved the uh, scalability of CloudKitty. We added a DLM, which is basically uh, a lock that you can distribute in a cluster. So you can have as many uh, nodes as you want, processing nodes as you want, and um, shatter your calculation across all the cluster. And Q&A, uh, we added a lot of tests uh, on, on the storage part to be sure that we don't have any consistency. So about our work with uh, Nubelu, um, we first met in Tokyo. Uh, they were uh, really excited about the, about the Cloud Kitty project because they needed to do billing, and it was um, a good way to integrate with an OpenStack and open source component and to make it uh, go in a, in a good way. So uh, basically, they told us they need Gnocchi integration. We knew that we needed it in some time to integrate with Gnocchi, but as it was not requested by people, uh, it was back in the roadmap. And uh, they really told us that they wanted um, Gnocchi integration. They were able to test the code and run it in their uh, servers on real workloads so we can have uh, huge feedbacks. So we put uh, Gnocchi on the number one spot in the roadmap. And it was really, really good to have them at, as a user because uh, they gave us review on code. Uh, they tasted it on uh, their uh, uh, open stack clusters with real data so we can get um, a real sense of will it, will it be scaling, is it working with real data and not test data. Uh, you get some data that you might not have about when you write a test and all this stuff. And they committed patches to, to um, what we did. And last, last, uh, last slides about uh, Cloud Kitty before the demo. Uh, what we, we, we will do in Newton. So the first step in Gnocchi was a good step. Uh, we improved uh, scalability issue, issues, and we don't relate on that much code from Cloud Kitty part. So all the storage will be done in Gnocchi, and all the collection will be done in Gnocchi. So we only do rating, and we don't need to focus on storage, for example, which is a, a good thing because people can focus on Gnocchi and improve at the same time storage in Cloud Kitty. Uh, so the goal is to uh, uh, improve the hybrid storage of Gnocchi, create a new storage that will directly store data back in Gnocchi. So you'll have your um, raw data and the result of your calculation. The goal is to be able to use the same API. So you can use Gnocchi API and uh, graph, for example, if you want to do graphs, you can query only one API and do graph of your raw data and your calculated data. And you don't need to know two APIs, which is Gnocchi and CloudKitty. Uh, we have new collector models uh, coming up. Uh, it's part of uh, better user experiences. Um, in some ways, it's pretty hard to, um, to know what the data is looking like. Uh, for example, if you want to apply rating on an instance, you need to know what the field and the metadata, metadata field will be. Uh, at the moment, you need to have some insight on Gnocchi and know how the data is modeled in Gnocchi. Uh, with the new collector model, we will um, self-document uh, on the API what the objects are looking like. So you can have an API call or in Horizon directly consume API and show to your user, okay, this is an instance object. This is, these, are, these are all the field. For example, you can uh, apply rating on a flavor and then you can directly uh, show, show them what the field looks like. And as I said before, improved storage model. So we will mostly use Gnocchi to have better performances. Perfect. That's time for the demo. So.
Okay, so <clears throat> now we're going to see how to use all of these APIs in, in the real life. Um, this is based on our dashboard. It's a new value dashboard. Uh, it has several changes uh, regarding user experience and usability front end. But we also added some uh, features like the possibility to do uh, reportings in, in different uh, ways to export that reportings, uh, to create charts that are like uh, uh, a graphic way to, 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 sh to uh, show the users uh, the metrics and the measures, um, and also uh, the dashboards that we will see in a couple of minutes. So suppose that you have this, uh, this oration is, is connected to our, our cloud. We have all the uh, Sailometer agents uh, pushing data into our Nyogi system. And we, are, we, we, have been, uh, we will be, will be uh, calling to that uh, APIs, to the, to the Cloud Kitty and to the Nyogi API. So first of all, we will create new rules because we have the metrics in our Nyogi system so we have samples, but we need to create bill line items with currency values. So I will disable the uh, rating model first, first because uh, we, we uh, don't want to create inconsistencies. Then we will create a, a new rule set that is a set of rules, of course. We will choose uh, this, uh, this device write bytes. We will choose the unit in which we'll, uh, uh, the, the, the rule we will be based, and then an aggregation function, in this case, uh, summarize. Perfect. So once it's created, we will manage that rule set, and we will start to create rules. So we will create a new rule. It will be a flat rule, and we will put here $10. So this rule is quite simple. We will charge $10 per gigabyte written in the disk of an instance, okay? Per hour, of course. So you can create more uh, complex uh, rules, uh, rules in a rule set, like the threshold rules that are rules that, for example, I can say, I will charge $10 per gigabyte, but if the, if the user uh, writes more than uh, one petabyte, I will charge 10 extra dollars per gigabyte. Or maybe if, uh, you can create rules in base of metadata that are metadata rules that, for example, um, added to, the, to, the, to this base rule, if the, uses, if the user can, will use another flavor, for example, a platinum flavor, we will charge 10 extra dollars. Or if they use a gold flavor, we will uh, discount uh, $5, for example. So once we have all our rules created, or our uh, set of rule set, we will enable again the rating module and we will go to the uh, report section. Show back the report screen. And now we will create a report. That's that we want to do, finally. Okay, so now we have the measures, the, the samples, and we have bill line items. And we, will, and we want to show that bill line items in a report. So we will put the name, we will put if uh, the report will be able for common users or for administrators, a little description. And here we have all the available metrics in our Nyogi system, in, an, in an our Cloud Kitty system. So if we want, we can show uh, the costs or we can show just the measure. So you can uh, choose the granularity from your storage policy. You can choose between uh, several granularities, and the timestamp. In this case, one day of granularity and seven, day of, seven days of timestamp. Then we can put a description of the metric because instance, it's the uh, instance uptime, but uh, nobody knows that, so we want to uh, show that it's uh, the instance uptime of, the, of all the instance from my cloud. We will just, just show the cost, not the measure, and we will select the group by, the metric groupings, and the order. So this is the group by uh, feature that I, I told you. Uh, it's, uh, 
we will uh, get our report divided by project ID in this case, then flavor ID, and then instance ID. And we will have the partial cost of every one of these levels. Then if you want, you can, for example, filter by a specific project because you, you, you want to uh, create a report from, from a specific project or from a specific flavor. So it's, this is creating. I have created another one to show you. Perfect. So this is how the report looks like. So you have the period that it's the uh, granularity that uh, from your report. We will choose here just one granularity. That's, that is one month, 30 days. And then you have a navigation bar in which you will, can move from different uh, periods. So we are seeing the uh, month of uh, March. You can move to the previous months, to February and so. Then we have the total cost of the month, in this case, $75,000. And then we, then we have the uh, uh, partial cost of the projects, for example, in this first uh, screen. And uh, you can notice that we have two metrics here, the CPU delta and the instant subtime. And we, we, are, we are summarizing these two metrics. And we have the partial cost of uh, each one of the projects. For example, the admin project, migration test, that is another project, and all the projects that you have in your cloud. If you, uh, for example, uh, drill down in, in one of these projects, you will be the partial cost of every one of your flavors in your cloud. For example, the large flavor, medium flavor, etc. And if you go deeper, you will have the partial costs of uh, every one of the instances in your cloud. So if you go to the previous month, to uh, February, you can see the same information. The total cost, 38,000. Then the partial cost of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of every project in the last column. And if you, if you drill down, you, you can have the partial cost of every flavor and then the, every instance in your cloud. So what you can do with these this, um, reports? So far, you can export the reports in uh, two different um, formats. One is PDF. And the other is the CSV. So uh, for example, you can uh, export the report and uh, open the report with uh, another application. Can be, can be Excel or can be your own billing application. So you can import that report in your uh, billing application. And you can, for example, generate uh, electronic bills or paper bills uh, as you want. Perfect. So, Another way to use the metrics, it's with graphics. So we have created a new feature to create different uh, kind of gra graphics in base of metrics. Those are, for us, the charts. So we will create a new chart definition uh, with the name of the chart, with a single description. And the chart is created in base of just one metric. Okay? It's not like the repo. In the repo, you can choose several uh, metrics. So far, in the charts, you can select just one metric. And then you have to select the same uh, parameters. The first, sorry, the chart type, if you will use a pie or a column or uh, whatever you want. Then the granularity and the time span of the chart. Then you will choose if you will uh, show the measure or show the cost. You can choose between uh, each one. And the aggregation. Like, like the report. In, in this case, we will, uh, we will group by project ID. And then we save this. So once you have all your charts generated with different uh, graphics, we will create dashboards. The dashboards are the way to show, to, to use that charts. So we will create a new dashboard. We will select if we'll be able to uh, see by, the, by a common user or by an administrator user. <laughs> Then you have to add the charts that you have created. For example, uh, in this case, we will select a lot of charts, CPU delta, CPU time cost, network, average. 
last one, cloud. Boom, done. So you have all your graphics there in your dashboard. Uh, this is a template, so, so uh, you can reorder your graphics. Uh, maybe if you if if uh, you have some more important graphic, you can put that graphic at the beginning, then uh, scale up or scale up uh, scale down your graphics. Um, those are uh, like JavaScript based graphics, so you can interact with the graphics uh, filtering by. In this case, it's a CPU that you can filter uh, uh, an entire project. Um, then you can add, uh, again, the project. Uh, you, you can interact with your graphics. Then we will, have, uh, we will put a name and then a description to our dashboard, and we will save this dashboard. Perfect. So. This is a really good way to show other people, to show our, uh, other departments uh, how the code they are spending their money in their, in their cloud. Or maybe to show uh, to a director uh, what's happening in the cloud, how is divided the cost of, uh, uh, regarding the uh, projects or the flavors or the instances. So then they can take uh, better decisions. And it's a really uh, quickly way to, to see what's happening. Uh, you, you can uh, go uh, over the, the different parts of the graphic and you will get uh, the, the partial cost of every, uh, for example, in, the, in that case, were uh, flavors. And another, another um, functionality is that you can detect uh, if you're having some issue. For example, in this case, this is the bandwidth usage. So if, if uh, some instances it, it's, uh, having, it's having peaks in the use of, of the bandwidth, you can just uh, select a period of time, zoom in, and uh, see what, what's happening with that uh, particular instance. So you have, well, as I say, different kind of, of graphics, and all, all, are, uh, all of them are uh, interactive. And another thing that we can do with this is uh, select this dashboard as our home dashboards. Uh, so for, for the admins and for the common users. So for example, you can select a dashboard as a default uh, home uh, of, of an user. And when a, a, user, a new user uh, log in into, the da into our OpenStack dashboard, they can select the billing home and they have our Picasso with all the graphics and uh, all, all the charts, the selected charts that we choose to them to see. So that's all. Uh, thank you to everyone to be here. And we will res respond some if you have questions. Any questions. Yes. Uh, here we have Just our some. contacts. Sorry, just here. I had a question on the, the graphics. Can those yeah. be embedded in other dashboarding technologies? For instance, there a URL where you can call, get that graphic and embed it somewhere else? Yes, of course. You can do it. Cool. Yes. Our, our, uh, we are using an engine, uh, Java engine. It's, um, it's really uh, common. So uh, you can use it uh, in, in the way you want. Okay. Just, we, are, we are just calling the, using the RESTful API from Tokiri and from You get a JSON Yaki. document back and... We, we get the metrics and just show the metrics. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, for your uh, backend Ceph cluster, how hard does this metrics gathering hit that? Do you recommend a dedicated cluster or is, I mean, is this going to interfere with other uses of that Ceph cluster? Well, that depends on your architecture. Um, I mean, the, the, the problem is not the size, because the metrics are quite um, are, uh, also um, <coughs> compressed. Compressed? Yes, it's yes. aggregated and compressed. Yeah. So um, 
you don't have uh, to you, you don't have a lot of uh, size, uh, but um, the performance is different. So the problem is the I/O uh, in, in in your subcluster. So uh, as you will not need uh, a lot of space, we prefer to use, for example, a, a little uh, cluster of SSDs or something like that with high performance and uh, low space. Yeah, because basically Gnocchi is slicing your data in small files and compressing them. So it uses your indexer to find where is your data and get it back and uh, show it to you. So you need to access multiple files. If you want to have a huge time span, you need to access multiple files. So it can be I.O. intensive. So the key is the, uh, the uh, I.O. Not the throughput, not not the the size in the cluster. For example, we have like a two two hundred instances, and all the all our self cluster uh, is uh, about one gigabyte of metrics. Okay, thank you. Okay. Someone else. About uh, the rate calculation. So, is there any modeling actually you are doing like per server, per power consumption, or uh, like a, a space? So, merge it together and say, okay, that's a recommended rate, or you already know? No, you have all the possibilities. You, you, you can create your own combinations. Uh, we are working today in, um, in a capacity planning feature and a comparing feature to, to uh, make comparisons between different metrics and to, to do uh, some uh, statistic uh, operations uh, to, to have a capacity planning feature. But you, you can do uh, whatever you want. Uh, another question is, uh, uh, what's the scale actual limit right now? How many instance or user or, or host that you support right now? Well, I, I don't know the final the final uh, size that you, that Gnocchi will support. Uh, we we have a cluster of uh, ten physical nodes with uh, twenty twenty five or thirty instances each one, and all the metrics that Sailometer provides uh, that have been uh, has been pushed into the our Gnocchi system. But uh, it's it's not a big cloud, we know. It's like a medium or, or small cloud, but um, we are, we expect to to test this in a in a in a bigger cloud in the next months. Right. Do you have any plans to support a uh, like collection analysis of say public cloud providers like AWS, Azure, you know Google? And that? Perfect. So, Nuki support Nuki it's a uh, time series metric database, so you can push the metrics that you want. You can create the resources and push, push the metric that you want. Uh, right now, we are working in, um, in some agents, uh, one for uh, VMware and another one for uh, public clouds to get uh, measures from those clouds and push it into our dashboard. So uh, in the next months, we are work, working to, to uh, create this kind of agents and uh, try th this new, uh, uh, it's, it's like a new business because you, you will be getting information from other clouds and pushing to our dashboard and, and, and showing and do billing with that information. So it's an idea for the, for the next months. I don't know if it's that there are no official Asians uh, to. No, you, you can do it multiple ways. Uh, you can even cr uh, create a driver for Cloud Kitty, so you can pull data from a public cloud. You just create a driver that get fetched from your public cloud, and you apply calculation, and you go back in the Cloud Kitty pipeline. Uh, or you can uh, create your polar for uh, for Gnocchi. So you fetch data, you store them in Gnocchi, and we process uh, Gnocchi data like we process every data in, in Cloud Kitty. It might be better to go the, with the Gnocchi Polar because you're directly storing data and you can uh, run Cloud Kitty when you need and when you want and you don't have to ensure consistency of your data in the input. You know that it, it's in Gnocchi and as, as soon as it's in Gnocchi, it's stored and it will be always there. 
what kind of tools you guys use for performance, measuring performance, and what was your ideal architecture for measuring performance? Tools for? What was like, like did you use Rally or anything like that to measure performance? How did you measure performance of your Nuki? Ah, okay, the, the performance in Nuki. Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, you, you have different ways to do that. Uh, basically, uh, you have three parts in, in which it's the performance is uh, important. The first one is in the storage backend, in Ceph. So in Ceph, on Swift, or the, the backend that, you, that uh, you want. So there you have different tools, like, like FIO or uh, Rados Benchmark or something like that. Uh, then you have the part in the RabbitMQ uh, cluster. Uh, we know that RabbitMQ could be a problem. Um, so you can, uh, you can monitor uh, uh, your backlog, your message backlog. So you can see there if you have a message uh, that are still are, are not processed. And you maybe have to add more metric Ds or tune your um, your RabbitMQ cluster, and the another uh, uh, the another part it's uh, well all, all the APIs from then or the APIs pool uh, and the metric D processors. So you you can in this way in this case add more uh, processes to support more uh, uh, incoming metrics with uh, in your met and in your APIs, and in the case of metric D processor you can add more processors and you. Uh, you have to use Redis to uh, coordinate that pr uh, metric D processors to process more amount of data. Because you have a backlog in RabbitMU and you have a backlog also in, in Ceph. The metric is pushed into Ceph in a row format, so you will be a list of metrics in Ceph, and that metrics, that row metrics should be processed by the metric D uh, processes. So. If the backlog is uh, is too big, uh, it's it's not so good. So you have to add more metric Ds to process the data in parallel more uh, yeah, more quickly. Yes. Uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, the metric list retrieved from Cilometer, uh as time goes on, or or in a very short time, it will be a long list, right? Uh, uh, inclu included the uh, deleted uh, resources, with my ma metrics. And uh, this list will be displayed uh, in, uh, in a drop-down list. Uh, Does this question, this uh, bothers you? I didn't catch that. No. Uh, do, do you mean uh, when we process uh, serometer data, when we collect serometer data to process them in Cloud Kitty? Uh, the res the metric list is uh, displayed in the in the drop oh. drop drop down list. Uh, actually, it's metric li list from Nyoki because w they only support Nyoki. Oh, uh, Nyoki. Uh, okay. Cloud Kitty, you at the moment you don't get directly the metric list. You know what you're supposed to collect. You can activate collection of some specific metrics in the configuration, but we you don't have a dynamic uh, list of uh, metrics you can collect from Serometer. Uh, we might plan on adding that in the future, but we are mostly focusing on, on Nyoki. We, we are, we're doing Nyoki and Silometer in parallel, but we want to have 100% support of Nyoki, which means collection and, and storage, and full storage in Nyoki, and then we will go back to Silometer. Because most people, when they have a big cloud, they want to transition from Silometer to Nyoki storage because it will scale better and they have better performances. And when you want to do billing or graph, you want some uh, backend that will respond uh, really fast to be able to graph it. Your user don't want to wait uh, 20 minutes to get graph, for example. So um, most people will directly use Nyoki API. That's why we want to uh, have a, a full support for Nyoki in Newton and then go back to Silometer and try to improve the support. Okay. Is that answering your question? Well, we are running out of time. So thank you to everyone. And if you have any, any other question, we will be right there to answer that.
No, not this time.